So I've just recorded with Enrico Frezza, a man who's absolutely revolutionized the skincare industry with his incredible acne pimple patches. You do not want to miss this conversation. Hi everyone and welcome to Founded Beauty, a podcast dedicated to beauty entrepreneurs who built some of the biggest brands today and where we can learn exactly how they did it. We'll cover some of the most intimate stories, their path to success and how they overcame the obstacles along the way. I'm Akash Mehta, your host, CEO and co-founder of Fable and Main, a modern hair wellness brand inspired by ancient Indian beauty secrets. Building Fable and Main has been an incredible journey so far and I decided to launch this podcast as a founder keen to learn and connect with fellow founders across the world. I believe in collaboration over competition and so I'm using this platform as a way to inspire and hopefully help each other in what can be quite a lonely and tough journey. So if you're an entrepreneur or simply just curious to know how to build brands, this podcast is perfect for you. So without further ado, it's a delight to introduce you our guest speaker, Enrico Frezza. He's completely revolutionized the world of skincare with his famous acne patches and other clean and targeted skincare products. After struggling with acne and hyperpigmentation, Enrico set out to make his own solution. His frustration became the catalyst for developing technology that treated the root cause of breakouts, not just the symptom. Peace Out was born out of his necessity to develop acne products that actually work. Today and every day, Peace Out's mission is really quite simple, to create good, effective, clean and fun products that help champion people and their skin. Enrico, thank you so much for being on here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to have this conversation, so let's just get straight to it. My first question, most obvious question, but I think the most important one, who is Enrico Frezza? So my name is Enrico, um, and I'm the founder and CEO of Pisa Skincare. I'm originally from Milan, Italy, and the story of Pisa came from my own struggle with acne. So when I was a teenager, I had terrible acne, um, and it was really hard on my self-esteem. And I tried everything on the counter to treat it, um, but nothing would have worked. So I started taking antibiotics, and that didn't help. So eventually I started taking Accutane, uh, which cleared out my acne. But then after about six months and I stopped my Accutane, I started getting breakouts again, uh, occasional breakouts. And when I kept getting those occasional breakouts, it made me feel insecure, just like when I was a teenager. Um, and I didn't want anybody to see me. And it was really tough back then because I didn't have anybody to talk about it. Um, there was not a place where you can you know, talk about your mental health and acne and and you struggle with acne and plus being gay, it was, it was a bomb of emotions. <laughs> um, and that's what I, I, I was looking. So once I had a really bad breakout and I went into a drugstore and I went to the acne section and I was like, I tried everything on, on in here. Um, and I know nothing works overnight. So that's what I ended up going on the bunker section and stumbled upon Adrocolloid dressing, which has been used for 25 years in the wound care industry. And he said, absorbs fluids and protects against external bacteria. I was like, I mean, I put egg whites on my face. Why not try this out? So I, I did a 20% salicylic acid pill and I put a patch on, on my forehead. Then I went to sleep and I woke up and my pimples were flat. A layer of my skin was gone. So the, the salicylic acid was definitely too high. But that made it clear that there was something that could absorb the pimples overnight, but I was still left with the redness and inflammation uh, from from the pimples and I had. So I was like, how can we make these a true acne treatment? And that's what I thought about infusing it with salicylic acid, vitamin A, and aloe vera, uh, which are actually patent pending because we're the first to ever infuse any acne active ingredients with an hydrocolor dressing. So that's the story Amazing. of the product. I mean, it's so inspiring. And I've actually, as a user of your products, what you've built is so phenomenal because not only is the branding very cool, concept very cool, the name very cool, but it really works. And I think, yeah, kudos to you. Uh, but I think some of the best businesses and products come from people who actually want it for themselves and put themselves as a client because I feel it's uh, sometimes the hardest one to, to please is yourself sometimes, right? Uh, totally. But when building it, did you did you find like, 
um, you wouldn't settle unless you, you know, you had the perfect product because, you know, it can be hard. You can have to figure out the balance between cost and, uh, you know, all those different kind of factors. So what was yeah. your journey in building it like? Um, well, the product aspect, I had the idea of infusing it, um, but it was not very easy because nobody ever infused anything with this dressing um, because it has to be melted at a really high point. Um, and especially not any types of acne products. So that's why we're the first um, acne ingredients. And that's where I started looking into patents and I started looking into anything mixed with this type of dressing. And I found that some a company in California was able to mix alginates with the hydrocolor dressing because alginates improves the adhesion. So I was like, well, if they mix alginates, maybe they can mix <laughs> my ingredients. Uh, so that's how I looked up the inventor, which actually had a company, a lab, and that's where I started working with them on the R&D aspect of um, start testing and, and trying to fuse ingredients. It took about 15 uh, R&D batches in order to achieve a final product because um, it would turn brown or it would not adhere to the skin or it would not absorb. So there, there's so many components and um, manufacturing methods that had to come in place in order to find the right percentages and the right levels um, to make the final product. So once we achieved the final product um, with the right percentages and something that I was really pleased with and that was the best you know, acne treatment in the marketplace, that's when I started working on the branding. And that's where I partnered with my husband, Junior, which is our CMO, and we started looking at other companies and and acne brands and I felt that it was so clinical and so doctor driven and that's what we wanted to do the opposite we really wanted to make it unclinical fun and engaging and that's where the name peace out came about um it's like peace out to your imperfection peace out to your problems um and we wanted to really make it just something really effective and first to market but at the same time making it fun and engaging and you've done such a phenomenal job in doing that um, in terms of, I know you know you said about making some of the products and the, the formulations as being such an important role. So you used American kind of labs and in the USA, and but you were born in Milan. So did you? I think you went to business school at USC, or what was your journey like? Because did you make it while you were in Milan or in America? Um, while I was in in the US, I moved from Milan to near London. I went to Sheep like um, for boarding school. And then I, I did my boarding school there. Then I went to Miami for university. And then I transferred to LA to go to do my master at USF, which I never finished because peace out started. <laughs> um, but that's when I got the idea. I was in Miami and then it kind of, um, the concept started in Miami. And then I started working when I was in LA on the, on the brand and the product. And, and, and did you uh, work with mainly like LA labs and stuff? So were you able to really be close to them or? There, there was only one lab in the entire world at that time that was able to infuse these ingredients with, and it was only 35 minutes away from my house near LA. Um, but then now oh, experiencing amazing. cosmetics or the, they're in the medical industry, they've been doing medical devices for like 20 years. And when I first, you know, when we started looking at like, packaging option on where to put the dots and stuff. And they were like, oh yeah, this paper. I'm like, okay, this is not like a bandage that goes into an hospital. I'm like, we're excelling with Sephora. And they were like, but we don't understand. It's like, why, what's the problem with that? It's like, it just, it's not prestige. <laughs> no, so that, exactly. that was kind of an interesting journey, but. A lot of education, but also it's quite nice to know that you're one of the first to catalyze that and, you know, really make that happen. But I think before we go into Sephora, which I think is a very interesting conversation, um, I think you guys are one of the first to market microneedling patches. Um, like why, why did it go down the dots, the patches route, as opposed to what everyone else was potentially doing, which is kind of like serums and yeah. That's, that's a good question. So I, I started seeing that they started giving flu shots with microneedling patches, uh, to kids. So I was like, okay, um, why are they giving it with like, with microneedling patches is able to deliver a lot of ingredients deeper into your skin than a, you know, than a topical without getting an injection. So that's what I started looking into microneedling patches. And I found a company in South Korea that has a ton of patents on microneedling technology. 
And the reason why I wanted to treat dark spots and wrinkles with microneedling patches is exactly because when you look at topical products, they're limited on how deep they can reach the skin. And wrinkles and dark spots are the most tricky um, skin concerns to address. Dark spots because a lot of the hyperpigmentation is so deep under your skin that anything topical takes a very long time to make a difference just because it has to reach deep under your dermis. And with wrinkles, it's the same thing. The, it's the collagen breakdown, and it and it takes a lot of topicals and for a long time in order to see a significant difference with your with your wrinkles or fine lines. So that's what I thought. The microneedling technology was the best delivery technology for those ingredients to address those concerns. Yeah. No, and also it's also very cool in terms of access, easy access, branding. So not only does it work from a scientific angle, but I think from a just a human angle of like having these patches, it just makes it so much easier to right. put on and also still look cool in the process. So that's what I love about it. And sometimes like it's odd, but like I would go around with the patches and feel like not like it didn't. I didn't feel ashamed if I ever had a spot or an acne pot. You made it like quite like a mark of like you know. It looks cool. Yeah. So, no, very good. <laughs> I, I definitely had my, many times walking around with dots. Um, yeah, I, definitely. I, I think, I think now five it's... years ago was a little weird. <laughs> five years ago, yes. Now it's like people are just like, you know, it's Whatever, kind of people yeah. are doing TikToks in it every day. So it doesn't really matter. Exactly. Like... <laughs> um, no, so I, I really want to go into that Sephora piece. So similar to my rant. So did you guys launch with at Sephora from day one? What was your Sephora, Sephora journey like? Yeah, so we, we launched exclusive with Sephora in the U.S., uh, both online and in stores. And we had our website, our uh, DTC, DTC to consumer, but our website was really utilized as an education platform at the beginning because we really, we really wanted to focus on driving the partnership with Sephora and growing with Sephora before we started focusing on, on our website. Um, so, yeah, we launched in July 17 with um, a piece of Arcade Dots and... Since then, we have expanded with Sephora globally, and we're expanding with Boots in the UK, um, Flannels, and Cold Beauty. In we just launched that yeah, like two weeks ago, so amazing, pretty exciting yeah. stuff. Definitely, and I think as you said very clearly, it's it's important to a lot of founders or brands today. It's that kind of opportunity cost of you have multiple retailers, D to C first or retail first, but. With Sephora, it's just, if you're done right, they're the dream partner, really. Like, they, totally. they really believe in, in you and brands, and they grow with you. And it's like, you don't want to mess with that. So you have to focus on that first when you launch a brand and make sure it's a strong partnership to come. So, about Kudos, yeah. you know, I always say it's amazing to land the Sephora, the retail. Same to you. And I, I think also, like, I don't know if you came from the beauty industry before, but I didn't have any experience in beauty. Um, I came from cybersecurity, so it's like, the most furthest thing from beauty so i think i mean sephora as a partner also helped us a lot to kind of guide us through the beauty world and you know it's extremely competitive as you know and it's it's definitely challenging to like learn it really quickly and you, there's not time to waste on so having them as a as a partner was really um a blessing it's kind of like, yeah, they say in the kitchen, right? They really help yeah. you, even yeah. with names or any questions, they're there to answer. And uh, I mean, I, I have a beauty experience, but I, I was an engineer in my past. I mean, for four oh. years, I studied engineering. So uh, I definitely am also, apart from I worked in the corporate world for a while in beauty, but I was so, I'm was so new to the, the game and with hair care, you know, as well. It's very new to me. So having Sephora definitely like you, you know, helped a lot uh, and relying so, on their expertise. And their customers, they know the customer is the best. Right. Um, I, I, you know, you've done a lot of retail expansion and growth since 2017. And I think one of the main questions I would love to know is, and I'm going to reword it because I know you don't like the word challenging, right? You like, mm -hmm. what's the most like adventure, um, like what have the adventures been like since building Peace Out Beauty? Well, I think at the beginning, um, a couple of things. So I said that probably one of the most was building an acne positivity brand because it was unknown back then. Um, there was not really any acne positivity, positivity movement. So we took, you know, a bet on that. We didn't know if that was it's just, that's what I believe that I didn't like, just because you have acne, it doesn't make you any less beautiful or any other skin perfection for that matter is what makes you unique. But 
back then uh, I felt that was not at all in the conversation or in the beauty industry. Um, so we, we really wanted to launch with a strong acne positivity message. Um, and he had these, you know, his challenges on education and, and really building a community around that. I'd say the second part is probably building the right team with the right culture and ethos and finding the right um, positions um, for the company and the stages of the growth. Because as we launched, we, you know, we changed really rapidly in terms of the size of the company and, and the growth. And some people are just not able to adapt to that fast moving um, company per se. Yeah. No, definitely. So, because I, I saw in one article you went from once like four to five employees to 20 employees over a year. Like, that's a big growth. And also, like, how is it, how has that been like uh, in terms of your team? Is it all based in, do you go to an office altogether? Are you remote? And obviously, with the pandemic, it must have changed as well. But at the beginning, what was it like? Yeah. Well, the beginning was, um, only me <laughs> junior was yeah. uh, up before we launched and then um yeah he took a corporate job and then he came back after five months because i was like i can't leave this alone um but it was just being working from home so that was the that was the beginning um and then in year two well i think after eight months we launched we hired two people one for marketing one for operations um and then the second year we went to nine employees and then we went um last i'm losing track so yeah 18 or like nine employees and then we went to 16 and uh last year we had 22 and now we're at 31 so we wow. it's just the, the company now i feel like we have the right teams uh, in place and we have enough uh, help in each department in order to support the growth and the expansion that we're having globally um yeah yeah no and you need that like uh, people underestimate like yeah uh, especially as a founder sometimes you want to have all the hats but there's a point where we have to kind of tap out and be like cool i need help i need help i need support i need to grow and by doing that and, you need people and that's hard because it's you know it's like it's your baby and like you you really want to have your hands in all of it and i in that point i i do feel um Lucky that I, I really am hands in everything that in the company because there is nothing that I don't really know inside my company, um, which yeah. is it's great. And now yeah. that I was able to you know find the right people to, find, I'm like, okay, I don't need to know anymore. Just update me, exactly. You know, once a week. The top line, top <laughs> yes. line. I I do want to know because obviously with my sister, we're co-founders. We work every day together. There is that love as siblings, but also that personality that personal kind of relationship that can be sometimes difficult to balance like how, how has it been like working with your husband who's a cmo and how is that is it been a, a blessing or has it been days where you're like okay let's take a break <laughs> well it's definitely been a blessing because i uh, it, it, i didn't have any marketing experience so i need an m to really you know it comes from 20 plus years of consumer marketing um yeah. so you definitely brought it to the table I think we just we really are kind of working on two very different things. I'm very involved in marketing, but it's mostly on the creative aspect and not on the day to day um, anymore um, of the company. So we kind of don't step in each other's toes in a way. Um, and we worked in two different rooms, so it's in the next room. I mean, <laughs> it's like we can't work next to each other because it's too loud. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's healthy boundaries, you know. And that's I think that's important to kind of have. Um, you need each other, but you also know what your remits are, so that way you don't step on each other's toes, and you you kind of that's the best balance. So, yeah, no, I good. think the only downside glad. to it, we're always working. It's it's, yeah. it's hard to disconnect when you're both doing the same job. Um, yeah. So th I think that's the only downside of it and i think that that's the issue with founder-led brands is it's when it's your baby it's your heart and it's like at 11 p.m you're probably like should we just do some more work or should we watch a film and both are enjoyable in some way right so you're like yeah. oh, let's just go back on the laptop and work and yeah setting that kind of that balance is hard it's hard for sure yeah especially but, um, as beginning. long as you love what you're doing it's worth it it's worth it um True. and i think uh before we get into a bit more kind of questions about you individually i would love to just know um how has like 
because I'm just curious as I've built a brand during the pandemic, but how is like now you launched a few years before 2017 and then the pandemic hit last year, everything kind of shifted the way we work, very digital acceleration, stories have been closing, uh, remote working. How has it been like for you? Have you been adapting to it? And has it been a like a, a good kind of for the business, a good kind of mo- moment? Yeah, I think... Um... I mean, it was definitely scary at the beginning. Um, Milan was really early affected, so I kind of saw how coronavirus impacted Milan, where my family was. So I started taking, I guess, action back in early early Feb to the second week of Feb um, because I was like, if Italy is like that, it's going to come to the US. There's there's just no way that it's not going to expand worldwide. It was just inevitable. So we kind of created like a um, bad, really bad, a bad and not so bad scenario in financially. They were like, okay, this is everything closed and there is zero sales and everything is down, what happens? Uh, and then it was, and it actually, um, I think that helped us to really um, navigate the first two months with the globally store closures. Um, the online business kind of exploded for us and both us and Sephora. Um, so it helped us to, you know, maintain, um, a good amount. We, we actually grew, uh, 75% our business last year. Um, and our Amazing. e-commerce grew, grew 375%. So from the previous year, so we had a, we had a grow, great growth year. I think internally, um, it allowed us to take a step back and really relook at our marketing and, uh, for example, TikTok, it was something that it was in the works, but we never really had the time to really sit down and strategize on it. And, I'd, and I remember sitting down with Julian, I was like, I don't want to jump on TikTok until we have a strategy on how to execute it. Um, so it gave us the time to look at that. It gave us the time to also relook at the marketing, especially for Gen Z, where they're not so interested in you know the perfect beauty shots with models. They're, they want to see real skin. They want to see transparency in, in your products they want to see the the junk of the poor strip or whatever it is that you get you know and that really helped us to explode in tiktok during the pandemic yeah and i think even one of our sephora meetings they were like if you're not on tiktok you're a dead brand and it's like if we really took that to heart we were like wow this tiktok is it's huge. Uh, someone who is it's huge and and it really does really help build that authentic storytelling because it's really raw it's ephemeral it's educational and it's video content so yeah exactly. definitely and i think i've been seeing so many acne um kind of a lot of the beauty tiktokers post about it and exactly as you said it's really about celebrating in the fact of like you shouldn't be ashamed everyone has it it's so human um yeah. and i think going to the gen z's who are you know they're quite open with this stuff now. I think it's the perfect totally. one. So, um, and in terms of like now, you Enrico as a person, I know you you're currently around like Tahoe. You're um, in America. Uh, what is like? I've been seeing your s- social media. I mean, your stories are amazing. Instantly, I'm motivated <laughs> when I see them. But what's your like kind of morning routine to keep you motivated? Like, what's like a morning for Enrico like? So. My phone stays on airplane mode until I get in front of the computer. So I used to not do that. And I used to wake up and check my emails as soon as I open my eyes. And that would create me anxiety throughout the day. Because it's just like I need my first 15 minutes to just not look at anything. Um, and my brain doesn't really work when I wake up <laughs> for 15 minutes. So it's, <laughs> it, 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 it's not worth for me opening the phone and, and try to activate those neurons that are not working. Um, but normally I, I make, um, you know, my, my tea and just have, um, five minutes to, then I, I wake up during and then I do my skincare routine, which takes up quite a lot of time. Um, and then I get it from my computer. So that's the, no, that's, that's, I'm going to, I'm going to literally wow. do that. I'm, I'm a, I'm the worst. I straight away check my phone when I wake up and I get that, that kind of blue light in my eyes and, I, I need to do that. I'm actually going to continue. I leave my phone on airplane mode when I sleep. So all I need to do is, is just not look at my phone until I've had my coffee. Just, and ten, up, just 10 minutes. Up. 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, just, just 10, 15 minutes. It, it, it won't change it's anything so in terms of checking the emails, you know, or, no, or exactly. checking the call. It, it's just, even if you have to wake up 10 minutes earlier, just to have that time, then 
I think it's worth it. It really changed uh, my morning and being able to wake up more positive and less positive stressed and be like, and... okay, now I'm for the computer, I'm ready to go. And also, I think looking at the emails in front when you have a ton in front of your computer, it makes it quicker than just looking at your phone and be like, oh, my God, this crawling. <laughs> yeah. Stress. and Oh, yeah, yes. 100%. And, <laughs> and in terms of like in throughout the day, do you have any like personal hobbies or things you like to do um, when you have the time away from work? Uh, that's kind of makes you, it's your unique kind of way of life. Like what are your hobbies? Um, so I like to work out every day. Um, that's kind of my, my time to disconnect. Um, and sometimes I, I'm, you know, guilty of checking my phone and start answering emails while working out, but I'm trying to get better at that. Um, that's my time to really disconnect uh, from everything and taking the dogs for a walk. I mean, we're in Taos, so there's, you know, so much um, great gotcha. hiking places and uh, great places to walk around the lake and stuff. So oh, amazing. Yeah. Well, work takes I, the majority I think, I think of it. So. Definitely. No, I think uh, work is always that, but I'm fully with you. I think it, I try to do at least half an hour, if I can, an hour and a half of a workout because I just feel, apart from the science part where you get all the endorphins, energy, it's just that moment of like relaxation, detax, you know, detaching from the yeah. world or from your laptop. Um, and if you can do like meditation and stuff, that's good. But I actually find sometimes working out is my meditation. It's very odd, but it's that's, my way of relaxing. I, I, I know, I, I hear a lot that I should meditate and eventually but i think i had a lot of 10 meditation apps and then i <laughs> for a week and then i stop um but i know maybe yeah, try exactly. a little it's, harder um, on that uh and now now travel is hopefully opening up um i have this like always this like fun last question to like tell people and ask people kind of if you had to take one product of yours on the next kind of travel flight what product is your go-to product from Peace Out that like everyone needs to have? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I go away for two days and I bring a suitcase as big of the whole products. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's so no, but, um, but this, this, I, I, let's say I, there's a restriction now. One item only <laughs> uh, of, of Peace Out. Of Peace Out, yeah. Um, Acne serum. Acne serum. Okay. Because I it's actually such a multifunctional, gonna... it's such a multifunctional product. serum. So I, I used to use, you know, 10 serums and, and I was like, why can't I just combine seven of them into one product? So I don't have two mm, layers, of seven, seven serums on my skin. And, and that's how the acne serum came about. Um, mm. And then SPF as the SPF is so important. <laughs> but I, actually, uh, off time because I'm you know while I have the expert in front of me I actually want to ask like I I my skin personally doesn't always I'm quite fortunate in the sense of um I don't get acne that easily I don't get pimples that easily but I do sometimes mm. get like a bit of irritation it's very sensitive my skin um is acne serums really only for when you have visible pimples acne, or is it also like a preventer or like that, that's yeah, how, how do I you use, use it? it so you use it as a preventative treatment um what I wanted to do with acne serum is to get the highest salicylic acid at 2%, which is allowable. Um, but then add ingredients to, to counter fight the, the dryness you get from the salicylic acid. That's why we have trilluronic acid, central asiatica, um, and yeah. have these dry ingredients so that it doesn't dry out your skin, which is one of the biggest um, downsides, I think, of a lot of acne serum and treatments is that they it's all about drying, which is not healthy for your skin. Um, but do you get irritation from yeah. shaving? Yeah, definitely. I do. When I shave straight away. Yeah. I shave yeah, every should, single day just because. Yeah, you should try um, to exfoliate. I mean, yeah. um, even a light exfoliation mm -hmm. like blemish balm or, or something else that can take away mm -hmm. your desk cells. That, that will help with a little bit with irritation because they're probably small ingrowns that are okay, causing I'm irritation. I'm going to go to Boots straight after and I'm going to get all these products. Uh, it's funny that you say Centella Asiatica because that's in our shampoo um so it's it's also known as tiger's herb for people who don't know yeah and um it's actually did you know the story about how tigers use it in the wild enrico no I, I, don't. Uh, I don't know if, so yes, tigers please. in india actually uh, roll around in centella asiatica to heal their own wounds so it's nature's own healing treatment so uh we use it in our shampoo to like really 
heal your hair. Wow. Um, so tigers have been using it way before us, and that's what they use in the wild. So that's why it's called tiger's wow. herb. That is so cool. Yeah, in India. I didn't know that. Yeah, exactly. And I love the fact that these ingredients can be found in so many different ways because the best potent plant roots and ingredients are basically can be used on your skin, your hair can even yeah. be ingested. It's really about creating these products that work for thousands of years that you know we're modernizing in an accessible form for everyone yeah, to enjoy. Totally. So, yeah, I love that. Uh, okay, so it's been, a, well, it's been an absolute pleasure, but I want to finish with some fire round questions because I know we could speak all day and I'm sure we will in the future. Um, a lot of things to talk totally. about, but in terms of five quick questions that I want you to answer with your first kind of thoughts. Um, the first is what's another beauty brand that you love? Oh, um, there are many. Um, just one, uh, I would say just what? Palace Choice. Palace Choice, yes. Definitely. I actually uh, uh, just bought a Palace Choice um, serum the other day. So interesting, literally I, yesterday. I, so it's interesting. I think it, it, I just love the education piece that they that they yeah. you know provide with all the ingredients and and definitely the, all of the products have a lot of scientific um, reasoning behind the decision of each ingredient that it's formulated where it be, it's being yeah. formulated without fragrance or irritants and. Um, I mean, they've been around for a while and I, I think they've been doing a great job uh, really addressing different Definitely. skin concerns. Definitely. Pilot's choice. Um, what's a guilty pleasure of yours? Mm. Like food? <laughs> like food? Yeah. What's a guilty food of yours? Uh, we eat pizza every Sunday. We found this amazing okay. pizza place in in Tao, um it's called lake Tao pizza company and it's so good and i can't resist it so then that's very I do extra it must be so good it's so exactly good. if someone in gyms italian, a lot but also so. in italian so it was, yeah. every single italian says no 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 pizza like in italy but the fact that you found one in taho that could be rivaling the italian pizzas it must be it's a good so place good. yes it is. Can imagine. and it's been i never found really good pizza anywhere else so i normally wouldn't need it um and then yeah. um booked okay interesting good uh, when i come to tahoe i'm gonna check that out i'll let you know um you what is to... your current well, yeah well what are you currently watching or reading i don't know which one but well i actually started reading um i don't know right here this book skeaker the code nice okay I'm almost done with it um it's from this game skeaker chemist they have an instagram account and they sent it to me for a video that was really well um mm. written and super educational it, it, i kind of wish i read that four years ago but um yeah yeah so that and i mean we are kind of run out of things to watch on netflix <laughs> the pandemic haven't we all uh, literally. right um so yeah there's more reading than than watching right more now reading better much better well, yes good. that's true so skincare decoded i'll check that out um I definitely think it's also good to read things that are connected to things you do. You're kind of also educating yourself, helping the business. It's also quite nice. Um, yeah. What's your favorite social media platform right now? TikTok. <laughs> TikTok, yeah. I was about like, to say it in front like, of you. Like, I, and, and, I'm not, and I'm not on TikTok. Like, I, I post a thing for videos. I, I'm not into doing TikTok, but I'm into watching TikTok. I literally see it on the treadmill because you, you get so yeah. hooked and you, you can 45 minutes go like this. Yeah. So I sit on the treadmill and I watch and I watch TikTok for you know whatever That's I do so... cardio for because it, it just makes my time go so quickly. <laughs> um, and I, I saw you you guys are so also just so cool on it. Like you guys have done the, the first kind of partnership with Sephora. I saw that the Pisa X Sephora and yeah. raising the skincare concerns. So cool. Um, yeah, what you're doing on TikTok, guys, you must check out what Enrico and you know Pisa is doing on TikTok right now. Especially if you are into skincare, like they're the ones to watch. Um, and then last question: If you weren't a beauty entrepreneur. What would you be? And also, if you weren't in cybersecurity, so like, what would you do? Also, if I wasn't in cybersecurity? Yeah, because we already know that probably would have been the answer. But if you weren't in that. Can I still be an entrepreneur? Yes, absolutely. But what would, uh, you, what would you build? Probably another consumer goods brand. 
yeah direct um another consumer goods brand like or yeah yeah, I, I think that's fine. That means you're an entrepreneur like, at heart. So, yeah, yeah I, I think solving, you know, problems or making things that are boring more fun. Um, like, and a perfect example is like, uh, well, is bandages at Target. It's Target, like bandages have been so boring. And so one color bandages for, I don't know, many years. And well, it's really came in and just like, make all of these fun like colorful bandages and i and cool packaging and everything is like in little uh, cans instead of like the regular paper box it, it, it's just really cool so something like along those lines to make either solving a problem making things that are boring and old age um kind of really modernized <laughs> I really hope you make a, hopefully you're working on or you're going to make something new because what you done not peace out. I think we need more brands like this, Enrico, from you. So keep on creating <laughs> and I Thank can't you. wait to see. But for those who want to follow your journey, your inspiring journey and your incredible Instagram stories and everything from uh, what I've seen in Lake Tahoe right now, where can everyone find you? Um, so we can follow Peace Out, a piece of skincare um, on Instagram and TikTok. And my personal is at the Fretza, T H E Fretza, my last name, uh, on Instagram. I'm on TikTok, but it's private and I have like four videos, so don't follow me there. <laughs> <laughs> maybe see, maybe boring. later. <laughs> it's, I think there's, <laughs> there's definitely a balance between posting on TikTok and being a TikTok user, but being both is pretty much already a full time job. The amount of time. I mean, <laughs> those videos take a long time to create. <laughs> a long time. I had this vision of being a TikTok sensation and already it's killed within one week after the amount of <laughs> video time it takes me to create one and I get 100 views and I'm like, oh, I spent so much effort for 100 views. Not worth I, it. <laughs> I, I, I totally on with you on that. So I started, I yeah. tried it in April or May of last year and I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's not working no. I, And the worst part was my first video went kind of viral. I had like 35,000 views. I was like, okay this is it the second video I had like 50 views i was like what how is that happening so like, yeah you have to be consistent is weird. yeah it's weird but when it works everything. it's amazing but yeah, yeah no but anyway so thank you so much thank Enrico. So much. i could talk to you for days awesome. uh, really appreciate it and um yeah looking forward to hopefully meeting in person one day and continuing our conversations we'll be in london in june so maybe we can meet then okay hold awesome. you to that for sure Perfect. Perfect.